Hello, in this presentation, we're going to be talking about the transaction thought process. When we are constructing journal entries, when we are creating the transactions and recording the journal entries, we want to go through this thought process. We'll see it many different times when we construct just about every journal entry. This is the thought process I would like to think of when constructing any journal entry for a few reasons. One is that journal entries often have many components to them and we could start building them in many different ways, but the number of choices often freezes us up. When we have too many options, we often hit a wall, don't move forward. A systematic format will help us to move forward. This system is what I recommend because it will help us to move forward and because it'll help us to limit problems that people often have when we come up with our own systems. Problems like learning rules that only apply in certain sets of problems certain places similar to learning rules related to math that may be shortcuts for certain types of problems but may not be applicable to other types of problems leading to problems in the future and us having to unlearn something we learned in the past unlearning is difficult we don't want to unlearn we want to learn the proper way as we go forward going through this system of questions will help us avoid learning rules that only apply sometimes also we're also we always want to think of cash first because cash is going to be affected a lot about 75 percent of the transactions and when it is it makes things much easier because it's easy to know if cash is going up or down and therefore apply our one rule to see if it's going to be debited or credited once we know that it will become a lot easier to know what happens with the second part of the transaction so that's the, the thought behind the thought process. Here's going to be our list of questions we're going to ask every time. Is cash affected? We're recording a transaction, a journal entry. We're journalizing something that happened in a financial data. First question, is cash affected? If it is, we're going to say, is cash going up or down? Once we know whether it's going up or down, we can write that down. We can say it's going to be debited or credited. Once we know if cash is going to be debited or credited, then we're going to say what other account is affected. Oftentimes, especially starting off, there's only going to be two accounts affected. That's going to be the majority of transactions really only have two accounts affected. So if we know what's happening to cash, it's a lot easier to know what's going on with the other account. And it's a little bit more difficult than you may think at the beginning to know what's going on with the second account. If it's a liability or an income account or an expense, is it going to be debited or credited? Is What is it even? What category does it fall into? Asset, liability, equity, income, or expense? Harder to know sometimes with some of the accounts. Easy to know for cash. Do cash first. If we go back to question one and cash is not affected. Second question. What have, uh, what have we received? Cash won't be affected like 25% of the time. But a lot of them, majority of the transactions will have a cash component to it. And when it does, that's great. Think about that first. If it's not, oftentimes it's easier to think about what we received. Like we got an IOU even if we sold something on account, we sent an invoice out and people owe us money or we bought an asset or we bought some kind of an expense, incurred an expense. If we think about that first, it's often an asset in an expense or an expense and similar to cash therefore. So it's easier to know whether it's going up or down oftentimes. So that's what I would recommend thinking about first. And then once we know that account and we know it's going up because we received it, then what other account is affected we can use that knowledge to create the second part of the transaction just as we would if cash was involved in the transaction let's look at some examples first paid cash for utilities of 750 first question is cash affected we're going to say yeah paid paid means we paid cash so we're going to say cash is affected and so we can write that down. I'm going to actually write down the journal entry and any information we get when it asks for debits or credits or is something going up or down, write down as much as information as you can. We're going to say cash is there. Next question, is cash going up or down? Well, we paid it, so cash is going down. Now we got to apply our one rule. We got to say, okay, cash is a debit. We can see that in our trial balance by the fact that it does not have brackets. We need to make it to go down, so we're going to do the opposite thing to its normal balance, which is a credit. So we're going to credit the cash. We can journalize that if that's part of the process uh, of, of the problem we're working on, meaning here's the debit to the beginning, here's our credit to cash, and then here's the ending that we're going down because we're doing the opposite thing to the cash account. Also note that cash being a credit 
is on the bottom just because we know there's going to be a debit on the top. So we're going to leave some room, put it on the bottom. You don't have to, to do that. If you have more than two accounts affected and you put the cash on top, even though it's in the credits column, just to make it easy so you can start building the transaction, that's okay, although it's unconventional to do that. So don't think that you can't think of cash first because it's on the bottom because it's a credit. Think of cash first. And if you need to construct the transaction by putting the first account as a credit just to work through it, go ahead and do that and then rewrite it later on to format it nicer, meaning formatting with the debits on top and the credits on bottom. We also know that we're going to debit 750 to something if there's only two accounts involved, and there usually is, especially for the beginning transactions. So we know everything here. We know that we're going to credit cash. We know that we're going to debit something 750. We just haven't figured out what that last account's going to be, which of course is the question three, what other account is affected? And we paid for utilities. Now that might seem obvious. We're going to say utilities expense. But if you have a trial balance, it's going to become a lot easier because we know then that the assets and then liabilities and then equity and then revenue and expenses will line up in that order. And we can then see that the utilities expense is an expense account. And we'll pull that in to the utilities expense. And we already know it's going to be debited. We already had the debit there, 750 So we already knew that. We didn't have to figure out why we're going to debit the utility expense. That's the beauty of the system because utility expense might be a little bit more confusing to us as to know whether we're going to debit it or credit it. We know that we're going to credit cash. That's going to become a lot easier for us after a few transactions. That leads us to have to debit the utilities expense. Once you do that, however, you do want to think through, does it make sense for us to debit utilities expense? That will help you to double check whether you have done the transaction correctly and also to get a better understanding of how expenses work. So, or whatever other account happens to be the other account affected other than cash. So utilities expense is an expense account. All expense accounts have debit balances. We need to make them go up because they only go up in one direction. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which is another debit. So it does make sense that we would debit it. If we posted it, then we would post that out. It would increase from zero by 750 to 750. Another transaction with the example of cash not being affected purchase supplies on account meaning we purchased it on like a credit card or something is cash affected no because we didn't pay it doesn't say paid then we probably didn't uh, pay cash or if we didn't say received cash then we didn't receive cash if it says on account or something like that on credit then cash is not affected so then we're going to ask what what have we received in this case we got supplies so we're going to say supplies is what we got i would look through the chart of accounts and say okay is there a supplies account there may be two in this example because there might be an asset of supplies up here and an expense. Most textbooks will have you per first put the supplies on as an asset. So we're going to say assets are like cash in that they're asset accounts up here. They're in the green section. They all have debit balances like all the cash, the other asset accounts. We need to make it go up. So we're going to do the same thing to it, which is another debit. So we're going to debit the supplies. That also means we can record that. So we're going to record the 450, bringing the balance up to 450. Also know that we're going to credit something for 450 if there's only two accounts affected, which there normally will be only two accounts affected. So again, we know everything just by doing this process other than the second account that we need to record here. Last question, what other account is affected? We need to figure this out. Again, if you had the trial balance, it makes it a bit easier. Now, if it was cash that we paid, we would credit cash reducing the asset. We bought it on account on like a credit card. That means there's got to be a liability somewhere involved here. So here's our liability. The liability is going up in the credit direction. Again, we don't really need to know if we're debiting or crediting the liability because that might be a bit more confusing than the asset. We already figured out that we're crediting it. We just didn't know which account was going to be credited. Now we can think through it, however. We can say, does it make sense that we're crediting the accounts payable? Well, accounts payable is a liability account. It's going up. The bad thing's going up because we owe more money. Uh, therefore, it would make sense to increase the liability in the credit direction. So that's what we're doing here. We're increasing the liability from zero up 450 in the, in the credit direction. Mm -hmm.